The evolution of the S-Class has changed drastically over the few years that it's been out. So is the S-Class the ultimate German sedan? This thing is really nice. You're watching General Cars. This is gonna be the 2021 Mercedes S580. Let's get straight to it. Real quick, I want to give a big shout out to Mazda of North Miami for providing me the vehicle I was able to show you guys today. These guys have a wide variety of vehicles ranging from the Miata all the way to the all new Mazda CX-90. They also have some nice deals going on right now with the majority of their cars in inventory. So if you're looking for a nice affordable luxury car, I would highly recommend you guys check out Mazda of North Miami. <sighs> wow this is different um well i guess to start off with the interior of this s-class um this is very very technologically advanced compared to some of the stuff that i'm used to um as you guys know in the channel and stuff i don't really normally review cars like this and this interior is by far very advanced um i am a person that likes the original s-class interior I think that looked a little bit better and I like the dual screen that it had together and now everyone's following that trend. So I guess whenever Mercedes makes something new, everyone decides to follow it. I guess it's just how it is. That was a really good S-Class. This one, I'm not really too much of a fan of. Um, the interior for itself, I have some opinions about it. Um, number one, everything is touch button, touch screen or whatever you want to call it or whatever. Um, for instance, the AC controls, they are touch. Um, there's no like physical knob or anything like that. When it comes to volume, the knob is this. You know, it's a, it's a little touch thing that you just swivel your finger around and that's it. You know, it's actually pretty quick. It's very responsive. So I'll give Mercedes that, but there's no knobs in here. You know, you have a physical shifter, surprisingly. You, uh, majority of cars now go to buns and everything like that. This one is still the classic Mercedes S-Class shifter in here. You still have a normal toggle for your signals, your windshields, of course, and stuff. So I like the fact that at least that's physical, but pretty much everything else is really touch. Um, even the seat controls itself, they are actually sensitive touch. You don't really like physically touch them anymore or anything like that. You have to physically move it. It's just a touch sensitive button. Um, majority of the steering wheel controls, like I said, with the volume knob to everything else and everything in here, it's just touch sensitive. I'm not really a big fan of that. You know, I know some people may like that and whatnot, but you know, it's not really necessarily something that I'm too fond of. And I think that's a problem. I really think that is a genuine issue with majority of cars nowadays. Now, if some, if you guys like this stuff and whatnot, by all means, you know, th this is a car for you. But enough about venting about that. Let's talk about some of the good stuff in here and some of the really cool stuff, in my opinion, in here. First of all, this is a full gauge um, cluster that is fully digital, by the way. There's no, like, analog gauges in here anymore and stuff. That is nice. And I also do like the fact that there are, like, four different settings of how you can just go to different gauges, you know? So that's pretty cool. You have a sports exclusive. I'm gonna just keep it exclusive because it looks classy. Um, it's actually pretty good. Um, with the whole new Saturn screen right here, I don't know how big this thing is, but it's actually phenomenal. There is a lot of stuff in here and I will say it still takes some time to learn and everything like that. It's as big as a Tesla screen, but it's actually pretty responsive. It's very, very quick to respond. Um, and the amount of stuff that's in this car is ridiculous. I'll go just to simply the cameras. All right, there is a whole different settings of cameras that I have never seen before in a car. I just click auto. You can literally just scroll to 
whatever view you want to see and you can actually see your whole car and everything that is surrounding you in this car it is so cool i think this technology here is phenomenal you don't really need it but it's there and it just really goes to show how advanced cars have gotten when it comes to camera technology when it comes to safety technology it, it shows your own car right here it's not like any crap or anything like that it's actually really good and actually like fairly accurate too i'm actually <laughs> really impressed with how like advanced this thing is you also do have your reverse camera high resolution of course that's standard mercedes quality for you so there's that you do have the option of pressing auto start stop off which is pretty good not gonna lie to you and you have your normal startup button that's between the two screens here i don't like the way the ac vents are designed they are probably one of the ugliest things that i have seen in a while um but they are there and they function great. What I do like though, is the ambient line lighting that you see in this interior. This ambient lighting is gorgeous. You can also change colors. I have no idea how to do that. There are so many settings in the screen that I am not going to even remotely try to do and find that out, but you can change the color in this interior. You also do have um, nice, decent storage in here. I will say this, there's only USB-Cs in this car. So if you're a person that is used to USB-As or anything like that, you cannot get that in this car. USB-C only. You do have wireless charging that is tucked in beneath right here, all the way down in the center console. So it's a nice placement, but I feel like you would forget your phone there. I know I would. So, but it's a nice placement there. You also do have some extra storage here with two cup holders. And you also have a nice, decent size center console, which is actually fairly pretty big. So that is pretty much the front of this interior. I know this is a little bit of a, quite a bit of a talk, but there is a lot of stuff in here. And if I keep going on with the stuff that, you know, that it can be included with this thing, mind you, this is just a base model. Um, this video will go on and on and on and on and on. So I rather really not talk too much about it. But yes, this is exactly what you get in the Mercedes S-Class. There is a lot more that you can, of course, get if you option out to, you know, the top of the line S-Class and stuff. You can get so much more technology in here. It's not even funny. I probably went to the surface in the amount of technology that this car comes with just as a baseline. So let's jump in the back seat. It is actually pretty good in there. So I'm actually excited to show you the back seat. All right, now sitting in the back seat of the Mercedes S-Class. How is it? Well, this is my new buy behind my driver's seat position and stuff. So I have unlimited leg space in here. As a large sedan, this has great leg space. So I cannot complain about that. If you want more leg space, there is a larger wheelbase S-Class. If you're too short, or I mean, I'm sorry, if you're too tall. So if you're above six feet tall, whatever, maybe you may go for that. But me as being six feet tall, I have plenty space in here. There are really cool features in here that I will show you right now. For instance, there is a dual panoramic sunroof in here. Let's say if you want to sun open the sunshade up, you have the privilege of doing that in here. That is really cool. I love that feature. So, and if you want to close it, you just tap it right there. And you also do have the power of actually opening both windows in each side of the pa uh, as a passenger. So that is pretty cool. And you do have a peasant blocker. So you don't have to see anyone in a Challenger or anyone in a 98 Corolla. You can just block them away. And also on top of that, you also do have this. Extra peasant blocking abilities in here. So if some Ram 1500 is behind you, you could just secretly flick them off and disrespect them let's just hope they don't actually rear end you <laughs> but anyways that is one of the features that i do like it is actually pretty good and it actually does block the sun really really good so it's actually impressive on top of that you do have some extra stuff since this car is actually configured as a three passenger bench obviously there is different configurations for this car you do have a little headrest here that i have actually never seen such a crappy little headrest this is the only thing i'm going to really bash hard on this car it is a little crappy little headrest that has really good padding though so i give it that and you also do have a center console here and it actually is pretty darn huge so you have a little center console right here that has good storage and two usb ports right here usb c's and you also have a cup holders and a place to hold your phone and stuff like that here when it slowly comes out. 
two cup holders. So it's actually pretty good. So you can actually kind of sit a little bit upright, but it's comfortable enough. So, you know, there's no really bad issues here. You could just place your drink here and you could just go on, go on a simple little cruise or just have your chauffeur just drive you around and stuff. It's, it's pretty neat. It's pretty nice in here. So that's really what I could say in the back seat. There's really nothing much else. Obviously in a more higher trim S class, you will have screens, you will have um, adjustable seating um, back here and stuff. You can actually move the passenger seat in the front all the way to the dash and stuff. So you can actually fully recline. It, it's ridiculous on how much stuff comes inside of an S class. And this is just breaking the surface. Also, I will say this really quick. You have extra two USB-Cs right there with a 115 volt outlet as well. So if you need to charge your computer or anything like that, you are you have the power to do so. Trunk space also, we're gonna talk about that right now. It's a bit disappointing. Trunk space, like I said, it is a bit disappointing. The trunk in this S class is going to be about 14.1 cubic feet of space with the seat area up. And that's pretty much about it. It's very narrow compared that I've seen in mostly like an Accord or maybe a Mazda 6 or maybe a Toyota Camry. But this is the space you get. And you do have some storage underneath the trunk where you basically have your fix a clock kit because it doesn't come with a spare tire in the S class. Run flat tires. And you also do have a button right up top where you can actually close the trunk. So that is a bit of a convenience there, but that's pretty much it. All right. Now. This has a twin turbo V8 with a 48 volt outlet. So is it quick? I don't know. Let's see. I'm not gonna speed, but yeah, it's pretty quick. So 495 horsepower. I will say torque in the screen, so you will see it right here pretty much. I don't know exactly the torque, but it does have pretty much 500 horsepower. And now driving the S-Class around, <sighs> It, it does have an adrenaline push. I will say that. This is a very quick sedan. So probably one of the fastest I've driven so far. So I will be honest with that. But how is it like to drive when you're actually supposed to drive it properly? It is probably one of the softest cars I have ever driven so far. It has their suspension, of course. You can actually lift up the suspension and everything like that. And this thing just coasts. It's a cruiser car, you know, this is a car that's supposed to be chauffeured and everything like that. So you're not gonna really haul ass or anything like that whatsoever. I mean, if you wanna get an AMG one and stuff and you wanna go flying in the highway and stuff, you have the privilege of doing that. But, and you still do have the privilege of doing that in this one too. You know, this thing is not slow by any means. If you don't need this powerful of an engine, you can go for an inline six turbo. Yes, Mercedes does sell an inline six now, which I've never heard of anything bad about that car. And I've heard that engine was pretty good. So there's some good perks about that engine. But if you wanna go a little bit more powerful, you can of course go for this type of engine. And I will say this, the options in here with the way this one is equipped and everything like that is really, really good. It's really smooth. You know, the way this thing absorbs bumps is just, I cannot even describe it. it, it it's just unbelievable. With the air suspension, the way it absorbs the bumps, you don't really entirely feel them. Yes, you do feel bumps here and there and stuff, but like there was a rough little area that I went in this thing, you know, in this little street here, and it absorbed it so good that it's like, yes, you could feel, you felt it, of course, but it's like, it just absorbs it so darn good. On the highway, I know this thing is going to be good. Gas mileage, though, it's not going to be entirely the best. I mean, you're driving a twin turbo V8, so you're going to expect maybe around 16 to 18 miles a gallon, maybe 20 on the highway. But that's pretty much about it. You can't expect anything better than that. If you really want something better than that, then you know, get an inline six and you know, you have two less cylinders that are burning your gas. However, if that's not really in your mind, which I don't think you should, you get this. And I'll be honest with you, in terms of the way it rides, it's really good. And driving it, it does have electric power steering that's actually pretty responsive. I'm actually pretty surprised by that. It's very responsive. It doesn't feel as, soft as I would expect it to be. I, I thought it was gonna be softer, but it does have direct steering. You do have different modes as well. If let's say you want to go to a different mode, you can go to eco mode, which will kind of die down the gears. This also has a nine speed automatic. It's not a dual clutch or anything like that, but it shifts very quickly too. Um, but it's not a dual clutch or anything like that. So it shifts very smooth. I went to a bump right now and it's just super smooth, super, super smooth.
And this also comes all wheel drive as well. So it comes with the Mercedes 4MATIC all wheel drive system. It is rear wheel drive bias, of course, and it actually responds really good. So you do have eco, you do have comfort. So it comforts everything down. It dies down the engine even more. It does dive down the steering wheel. So now the steering wheel is a little bit softer, but it still handles and it's still pretty responsive. And also the suspension is at its softest, softest mode. So, and I, <laughs> it's so comfortable to drive. Um, sitting position wise, it's not entirely the best, but it's also pretty darn good though. Um, I do sit nice and low. I do sit pretty comfortable. I wish I had more adjustable steering um, abilities and stuff, but I don't really have a, too much of a complaint about that. I could rest my arm at a decent point, but that's pretty much about it. So there is that as well. Now let's try sports mode. There is a sports mode, which does activate the transmission and it wakes it up pretty good. And you do have Sport Plus, which I don't know why there is a Sport Plus mode, but it's a Mercedes, of course, so you're going to expect a little bit more. Of course, it stays in fourth gear, and if you really want to accelerate, turbos kick in, <laughs> and it goes. It will go. Zero to 60 is around four seconds on this thing, and it's pretty darn quick. So, But we're going to stay in comfort mode because that's exactly what the point of this S-Class is. We're going to go to bump absorbs it like nothing that was one of the rough terrains that i was talking about it's a little rough street right here in this neighborhood so the fact that it absorbs is so darn good it's so good it's so comfortable i i know easily i could fall asleep in this thing if just driving into like maybe orlando or something like that it's really darn good so in the engine you don't really hear anything at all when you're driving if you're accelerating of course yes you're going to hear something it's just of course but as you're driving and as you're cruising, you don't really hear anything. And this is probably one of the quietest cars that I have driven yet up to date so far because of the fact that this thing has double paned windows. So that's another luxury feature too. It has really thick windows in here. So it does sound detonate a lot in this thing. And you're not gonna really hardly hear anything. You don't even hear anything in the road. You don't hear really much of anything. You do hear rain, of course, because it is raining today and it's Florida. You know, Florida, it rains everywhere. So expect that. But other than that, there's really nothing else that I can say bad about this thing, honestly. The way it drives, it's phenomenal. It just has so much technology that it's overwhelming for someone to really just understand. And this is also a pretty big darn sedan too. This is huge. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but other than that, it's really good. It's really good. I'm not a Mercedes person, but I like this one. The Mercedes S-Class has always been that flagship large sedan that Mercedes has always had ever since the 70s. And to this day, it is still known as the flagship sedan with Maybach coming back with AMG still around and you have this S-Class, the S580. It's unfortunate to see that they're dying down with their engines, but it's still a really nice car. Until next time.